Hey there, this is Dane from VeatherProp.com. Thanks for joining me here in this video. If you've been following my last few videos, then you know I've been talking a bit about Calvinism. I shared that for about 20 years I held to Calvinism but have since fallen away from the teaching. In my most recent video, I discussed a very well-known passage of scripture that is commonly used by Calvinists and one that I had also used to demonstrate Calvinism, which was from Acts chapter 13. Now, to that video, a viewer, Jasper, had responded and uh, asked a question about another passage of scripture from John chapter 10, which is also seen by Calvinists as a proof text. It reads, Jesus answered them, I told you and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you do not believe, because you are not of my sheep, as I said to you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. Now, as Jasper pointed out, Calvinists are quick to note that Jesus told the religious leaders that they didn't believe because they weren't his sheep. Jesus didn't say to them that they failed to become his sheep because they failed to believe. Calvinists insist that this passage teaches the doctrine of unconditional election, meaning that God first chooses or elects a person to be saved or damned, and then God saves that person before they even believe in him. Jesus didn't say, you are not of my sheep because you don't believe, but he said, you don't believe because you are not of my sheep. Jesus seems to be pointed out to the religious leaders that they could not have faith because they simply were not God's chosen. It would be impossible for them even to have a saving faith. In addition to unconditional election, when I was a Calvinist, I also saw that this passage supported another Calvinist doctrine known as the perseverance of the saints. That doctrine means that the elect cannot lose their salvation because it is the work of God, not man. If a person is elect, then they cannot be unelect. God has foreordained them from the foundation of time to be saved, and their salvation is not something that they can even undo. Calvinists see in this John 10 passage that we just read when Jesus said, My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. The saved person is firmly in the hand of God and cannot be removed from that position. Well, I'd like to reply to these two ideas from my now non-Calvinist position and explain why I think that I was wrong when I believe those things to be true. You see, the Calvinists must import a couple of ideas into the text that aren't found in the text itself. The first of these ideas is the identity of the sheep. Calvinists assume that when Jesus is referring to a sheep in John 10, that he necessarily means anyone who is being saved. They believe that that person, a sheep, is only able to believe in God because God had made them a sheep. And so they begin with the belief that a person could never choose God, and then they read that back into the text and kind of rejoice when they find it there, not realizing that they placed it there in the first place. You see, the problem with the assumption about the sheep is that it ignores both the context of John 10 and the whole of Scripture. Beginning with the Old Testament, there are repeated uses of the sheep metaphor. In each of these cases, without exception, the sheep is always a reference to the Jewish people, never to the Gentiles. Unclean animals such as bears and lions and wolves and leopards are often used to identify Gentile people. Now, though it's true that one could be born a sheep, a Jewish person, it's also true that one could elect to become Jewish. A Gentile could choose to convert to Judaism if they wanted to and be grafted into the Jewish nation. They could elect to become a sheep. Jesus' own lineage is traced by Matthew through Rahab, a Canaanite, who had become Jewish. So you see, the sheep metaphor, as used in the Old Testament, has choice built right into it. John 10 borrows heavily upon or from Ezekiel 34, which uses the sheep metaphor, which, as we just discussed, includes those who elect to become sheep. And yet, in the Old Testament, God wasn't solely interested in those who had Jewish blood. 
Rather, God was always searching for a remnant of Israel who had faith, who believed in him, who sought him, and who loved him. That's what God was really interested in. And Jesus wasn't simply looking for Jewish people either, those born of Jewish blood. Rather, he was looking for those who had faith. He was calling out of the Jewish people a remnant of a people whose hearts had turned to God. These were the real sheep of God. And now in John 8, Jesus is talking once more to the religious leaders, and he insinuates that they are not the children of Abraham. They protest and tell him that Abraham is in fact their father and that they are descendants of Abraham. Jesus acknowledges that Abraham is their father, their physical father, but they are that they are really children of the devil. You know, I know that Jesus' listeners were terribly confused with the conversation in John 8. He admits that they are descendants of Abraham, but implies that they really aren't descendants of Abraham. Of course, Jesus is speaking spiritually, not in the flesh. Now, Paul picks this up in Galatians and provides some real clarity when he says, only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. So we can see that the real sheep that Jesus is calling to himself in John 10 are those who are of faith. As a non-Calvinist, the passage in John 10 provides no problem at all because I don't begin with the assumption any longer that only God makes a person a sheep. I don't have to read that assumption into the passage. Rather, taking my cues from the Old Testament, I understand that a sheep is someone who could choose to become a sheep if they wanted to. Therefore, it seems to me that Jesus is calling to himself those people who had chosen to incline their hearts toward God. Their openness to God allowed them to believe when the gospel was finally preached to them. The religious leaders, on the other hand, had hardened themselves towards God. That's why Jesus told them in John 8 that they were of their father, the devil. Luke observes that the religious leaders had rejected the will of God for themselves. They had elected not to become sheep. So you see, John 10 doesn't teach unconditional election. Whether that doctrine is found elsewhere in Scripture is something we'd have to discover on another occasion. However, a non-Calvinist can very easily read this passage when we understand both its context and the whole of Scripture. Now, of the section where Jesus said that the Father had given the sheep to Jesus and that no one can snatch the sheep from his hand and that they would never perish, the Calvinist believes that this teaches the doctrine of the perseverance of the saints. In other words, they believe that if God elects a person to be saved, they can never fall from salvation. Again, I think that as a Calvinist, I had begun with the belief that Calvinism was true. I just needed to find it in the text. But does this passage teach that a person cannot choose to walk away from their faith? It does not. Let's remember that in John 17, Jesus is praying to the Father. And he said, While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me, I have kept. Here, Jesus is referring to the apparent sheep that God the Father had given to God the Son. Jesus said that those whom the Father had given him, he had kept. But let's continue reading. And none of them is lost except the son of perdition. Now, I believe that Jesus is referring to Judas Iscariot, who had betrayed him. Jesus admits that he had lost one whom the Father had given him, Judas. Now, I know that the Calvinists will argue that this losing of one was a fulfillment of Scripture and therefore is the exception. And you can believe that if you want, but we aren't told that this is an exception. And if the doctrine is true and one cannot lose their salvation, then one would think that the various authors of the New Testament would not have wasted precious parchment warning readers not to do something that is impossible for them to do. But that's not the case. Like in 1 Timothy 4.1, Now the Spirit expressly says that in later times some will depart from the faith, or take care, brothers, lest there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart leading you to fall away from the living God. Or as Jesus himself warned, Every branch in me that does not bear fruit he takes away. And what happens to those branches that are taken away? Jesus said, And they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. 
Actually, this entire conversation that Jesus is having with the religious leaders in John 10 seems rather useless if Calvinism is indeed true. Why would Jesus be complaining to the religious leaders that they were unbelieving sheep if in reality they couldn't do anything about it? Why is Jesus pointing out that they were not his sheep if God had foreordained from the beginning of time that they could never become sheep? And this is just one of a myriad of passages where God is complaining to certain people that they shouldn't be unbelieving. Why do that at all if those people were never chosen to believe? Calvinism seems to suggest that God is a poor economist when it comes to his own speech. So, to answer Jasper's question about this passage, yes, there was a time when I saw John 10 as a great Calvinistic chapter, but that's when I looked at it without context and with a preconceived worldview. Without the Calvinist worldview, John 10 is certainly not a proof text of Calvinist doctrines. Well, I hope that is that you find that interesting, and if you did, then pound the heck out of that thumbs up button. And while you're at it, why not subscribe to this channel, and don't forget to click the little notification thingy to get notified when new videos are released. And thanks for watching. I hope to see you next time here on this channel.